is there more money going out than what is coming in? And no matter what you earn, you always find yourself repeating the same cycle. Not having enough money to save, not doing the things you'd really love to do, promising yourself you won't get into any more debt. It, I get it. It is easier said than done. I lived my whole life wishing for more money, and no matter what I tried or did, nothing changed. I thought I had a good relationship with money, but week after week, month after month, year after year, somehow I would still be in the same place. Wishing for more and more money and wondering why I would always end up back in the same place, not saving for the future and always getting caught out with another payment for something, this unexpected bill that just shows up uh, out of the blue. Now things are different. My money has direction. I am saving for the future and I love watching my money grow. I have a safety net for those unexpected bills and my favorite thing is I don't worry about money anymore and I think that is huge. And here's what I want to tell you. This is absolutely 100% possible for you. And to find out how you can also stop living paycheck to paycheck like I did, I have a masterclass coming up called Three Proven Steps to Stop Living Paycheck to Paycheck. No matter what you're earning, no matter what you're getting paid, you can do these principles and change your life. This is on the 16th of October at 8 p.m. BST, 3 p.m. Um, Eastern and 2 p.m. Pacific. Go to the link www.lorna pool l o r n a p o o l e dot l p a g e s l pages dot co slash master m a s t e r slash your y o u r slash money m o n e y slash masterclass. The link will be in the show notes. Hop on there, join us on the call, and get the help you deserve. Welcome to the Financial Freedom Podcast with your host, Lorna Poole, sharing the secrets to creating wealth, investing, and that all-important money mindset. To find out more and accelerate your journey to financial freedom, head on over to www.lornapool.com to get started. Welcome, everybody. Welcome to Financial Freedom Podcast. Would you like to invest in companies? Well, my guest expert today is going to share with you how to raise venture capital for your startup. Nicholas Henriksen is the co-founder of a company called Carlipso, graduated from Stanford Business School in 2013, went through Y Combinator. This was the startup accelerator for Airbnb, DoorDash, Strip, Reddit uh, in 2014, raised a total of 10 million in venture funding by 2015, sold the business to Caravana.com in 2017. He joined Caravana, went public at 2.5 billion valuation and are now worth 25 billion. Caravana is the most valuable used car retailer in the US. Nicholas and is, is the co-founder and a co-founder with another guy, isn't that right? And he stayed with Caravana for three years and left in June 2020 to start a digital auto loan refund refinancing platform this new business called clutch uh, helps americans with challenged credit doing their part to address income inequality nicholas great to have you here good morning thanks for having me so we're talking to businesses that are looking for venture capital right correct <laughs> okay you know how how do they go about that or <laughs> You know, how does an investor even find a company worth investing in? Let's kind of flick between the two. Yeah. So I think we should start with defining what venture capital is and for which companies it, it suits itself very well because Perfect. you, you yeah. can't raise venture capital for every, every, every no. company. So venture capital funding is um, capital that goes into very, very, very early stage companies, sometimes even only ideas. Really? Yeah. yeah. That, that yeah. early? That early, yeah. Yeah, if you have nothing, like we, we're about to start another company and so we're about to raise uh, venture funding for that and we really only have a pitch deck at this point. Yeah. And so what venture capital tries to do is invest really early 
usually it's a big fund and they make like a hundred investments. And at most, at most 10 of these companies survive. The others, yeah. they all try really hard, but they just never make it to become really big. And so as a result, the returns of those 10, 10 companies need to be so, so high that they pay for everything else, even for the ones where you lost money. Um, so I'm you're saying yeah. what? So you're saying the ten there's ten companies. So so some of these will actually succeed, and some of them won't. So the investor is investing across the board. Is that right? Correct. Like yeah, yeah. the rule of thumb is one company out of ten becomes big. Yeah. Nine companies either don't make it or never become very big. And so, so the venture capitalist is not just um, investing in one; he's investing in ten because most of these will fail, and one will will exceed. And this will do way better. Correct. Correct. So they get their they get their um, they get their money back. Um, exactly. Not only for this one investment, not only for all the other investment, it even returns multiple times the money they would invested yeah. in the first place. To, for example, um, what's a good example? Oh, yeah, Uber was a good example. I know a few people who, or a few, I know of a few people who invested say $50,000 in the first round of funding, mm-hmm. those $50,000 became $300 million. Yeah. And so you can't even do the math on how big that return is. But these same people also made 50 other investments of 50000 never got the money back. And so that's just the, the formula of venture capital. And Uber is an extreme example. Usually the companies don't get that big. That's like a complete outlier. But I think it tells the story. So venture capital is just taking huge, huge risks. Most of the companies don't work out. If they work out, they become incredibly big. Does that make sense? It does, yeah. Okay, and then, then the next question is, which, which companies qualify for, for venture capital? Mm. Um, and so as a result, you need to think, you need to be building a company that can scale very, very quickly, can become very big in very short time. And usually these companies are not brick and mortar companies. Usually these companies are technology companies where you're not moving like concrete or cars or, or something heavy, but instead you're moving bits and bytes. So these are tech companies. A good example is Facebook. Another really good example is TikTok. TikTok doesn't yeah. have any physical infrastructure. It's just an app. And yeah. And the value for these companies are usually different than from, from traditional businesses. Traditional businesses are commerce. You, you buy something at wholesale, you sell it at retail, you make a margin, or you provide a service. Uh, these modern businesses, the tech companies, they make their money very differently. They either provide software and get recurring revenue from software, or they build a strong network of users, users that might not even pay, but so many users that marketing agency might want to leverage your platform to market products to these users. So th- these tech businesses are very different businesses than the traditional businesses. Um, and thanks to the fact that they're technology only, they can grow incredibly fast. And when you mean incredibly fast, within the year, five within, years? Yeah, within, let's see, I'm thinking about a good example. Yeah, TikTok, I don't even know how old TikTok is, but TikTok had... Yeah, yeah it's very fast. It's, it's not around long at all. Yeah. yeah. Um, and so Facebook grew really fast, but now TikTok is growing significantly faster than Facebook ever grew. So yeah, in within a couple of years, you, you aggregate hundreds of millions of users, which is insane. Um, and then you have a platform that's really valuable. And so if... And if how, yeah? How... Um, if I'm setting up a company, how do I set my company up that I am desirable? I know you said um, we're online, we're um, a technology company, yep. we're going to grow fast. But how does a, an investor, um, what does he look at? Like you can say those words, but is, is he looking yeah. at prediction um, balance sheets? Like what's he looking at to say, you know, I'm, I have confidence in this? Yeah, good question. So that, that would be the next next question to ask. So if I want to start a technology company, how do I start and how, how do, what do I pitch? Like usually, depends on the stage, but usually, and I think you're talking about an early stage company now, you, you want to demonstrate a few things. You want to demonstrate that you're providing value through software or through 
using software to enable access to something um, that, that otherwise wasn't possible. And I'll give you an example when we talk about our business in a second. Yeah. Uh, and then what you wanted, that's one pillar. Another pillar is you want to show that the market you're giving customers access to is very, very, very big. Because you, even if you grow really fast and the market isn't very big, then the company can only become so big. And so let's talk about our business. Our new business is a digital platform to refinance auto loans. Um, refinancing auto loans in the U.S., people don't do it yet, or much, much less than they should. 50% of mortgages are refinanced, but less than 5% of ah. auto loans are refinanced. Yes. So the, the market for auto loans, so very few people do it, yet you can save thousands of dollars. So that, that's compelling already. And then you ask yourself, okay, how big is that market? Maybe there's just not a lot of auto loans out there or not enough money to be made. And then I will answer, well, there's 100 million auto loans. 100 million auto loans, and you can, and, and only, or less than 5% of those get refinanced. But when you look in the numbers, 20%, so 20 million auto loans, if you re refinance them, consumers would save thousands of dollars. So the, the market is thousands of dollars for 20 million people. That's very, very, very big. Yes. So if, if I now go to the investor and tell the investor, hey, here, here's what we'll do. We'll, we have technology that makes it really, really easy to refinance an auto loan. So that's the secret sauce. That I will combine with yet another statement is I'd, I also know how to find customers very easily. And I'll, I can walk you through how we're doing it, but let's just assume you believe me. So I have a technology that allows me to do it very easily. And I have a way to find so your technology is finding the customers. You're not physically going, everything's coming off a software. Exactly. Everything is online. And you said the right thing that the technology is, it's not rocket science, what it does, but it, it, it finds customers. Um, so it's a distribution channel to get in touch with 20 million people. And then if I do that with 20 million people, all of a sudden this becomes very, very big. And if I don't need to build buildings or factories, over time in multiple areas of the country, but I can, I can do everything online. All of a sudden, I'm reaching every American on their cell phone or through the internet with a mm -hmm. value proposition that's very unique in a market that's very big. And then all of a sudden, it becomes very interesting for investors because they can see, okay, that's probably hard to do, but if he succeeds, this can be a very big business. Yeah, because it's kind of like, um, you know, you mentioned earlier, Uber, um, there was a gap there. Correct. Correct. And they maximize it and they took advantage of it and look where they are now. And, you know, as you say, there's not a refinancing in the, in, um, in, ca in the car industry right now. Um, and that makes a lot of sense because, uh, you know, it's compounding for the customer the other way around, but <laughs> that's a, that's a very viable business. Hopefully. Yeah. Obviously, because I'm, it's I'm, all, it's, there's always a need for it. Yeah, a lot of people, like, there's always a need to save money. I agree. Especially today with them. Um, there's a, there's always a need, stuff. you know, like, you make the car, you know, more easily available. That is true. Everybody. That is true. That's yeah. why the, the mission is, so the short-term thinking is, let's save people money, put more money into the pocket of the consumer. And especially yeah. during these times with the pandemic, people need money. A lot of people yeah. lost their jobs, and so it's very, it's very valuable to offer today. But the, the long-term vision is the one that you said. Like you, you, you want to put more money into the consumer's pockets. You want to make cars more available to consumers so you can produce growth and prosperity. Yeah. And so, okay, so you know how to pitch your company so um, investors are interested where are you finding the investors? Yeah. So usually the types of investors we're talking about, venture capital investors, yeah. they're, they're not sitting everywhere. They're, they find themselves in similar locations. One location yeah. that's very famous for venture capital is uh, the Bay Area around San Francisco, Silicon Valley. It's, it, that's basically where the model has grown. Like That's where the first venture capital investors were. <laughs> Um, that's where where a lot of the successful companies are. So Silicon Valley is a spot where they're geographically are, geographically are. New York also, Israel also, London also, Berlin also. Um, and so 
these investors go where there's a good ecosystem for for tech companies to be started. San Francisco, for example, is interesting because it has Stanford, the university. It had early successes, so it attracted a lot of software engineers and electrical engineers. And so now you have capital and you have people who successfully sold companies. So you have capital, you have talent, and you have a machine that produces ongoing ongoing talent. And lastly, you have a mindset where entrepreneurship is is supported. Yeah. In Germany, yeah. for example, there's always a little bit of a stigma when you when you fail with a company. Mm-hmm. Um, in the US, Not all European thinking. <laughs> uh, that's a very European thinking, I agree. In the US, it's like, well, you failed already once? Awesome. Then you have a lot yeah. of experience. Let's do it again. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's so true because I, I lived in the States for a while and definitely the thinking is – you know, yeah, I definitely find it. You've just nailed the way you, you said that. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. And then how uh, do you find them? Like, so for me, I, I grew up in Germany um, and I really wanted to go into tech. I wanted to start a company and company in the tech space. And so the way f- I chose to enter the ecosystem is I, I moved to the US and I got my MBA at Stanford. So I applied to business school. I deliberately chose the ones that were had a lot of exposure and taught a lot about entrepreneurship. I was very, very, very lucky. I got into Stanford. And then while at Stanford, um, all of a sudden I'm in the middle of it. Like we had lecturers and guest speakers who had previously started companies come to class. We had investors come to class and teach us. And so we, like, we had the first like, hand experience to talk to them. And then fast forward, a lot of my classmates ended up either starting companies or becoming investors themselves. So that's why, as as crazy as it sounds in times where everybody works from at home, like the best way f- or the one that worked for me to get in touch and find these investors was move to where they are and then work in a space that they're excited about investing. And then slowly but gradually, you, you actually start to get to meet these people. Um, and if you don't know them, one of your friends or classmates knows them. So that's what I did and it worked for me. Yeah, you know, it's about it's about um, getting in the right environment and surrounding yourself with like minded people. Um, you know, it's a lot easier when you're in, you know, and the States is especially the States is very like if you want to be a movie star, you're in L.A. If you want to work with 100 you know, right, pockets, yeah. yeah, there's pockets of areas for whatever your interest is. And, you know, Silicon Valley, as you say, the technical companies, it makes a lot of a lot of sense. And. You know, interesting as well, hearing from investors, because an investor is going to tell you why they would pick a company over another. So listening to that side of it as well as as a startup, um, you know, having the right pitch to attract the investor um, makes a lot of of sense. Yeah. And I mean, it's I make it sound very simple. Like there's a lot of really, really smart people. I want, so, so your company, right? How do you work out how much you need or how many investors you need? Okay, good question. Um, it, again, depends on the, on, the, yeah, on the maturity of the company, the stage of the company. It, it depends on how much you want to spend on what. And in some way, it also depends on what you can ask for. When you're early on, usually the more money, the better. Like when yeah. we started our first company, Chris, my co-founder, and I decided we want to raise two hundred fifty thousand dollars. Somehow, yes. we ended up with one point two million. Yeah. And so, th- the reason we ended up with it is because we had a great, great, great first investor, a mentor of ours, said, "I want to invest," which he only did it to help us. But then he kicked off some sort of momentum. More and more people wanted to invest because of the first one. This is how investors often work. Yeah, and when we said at some point we told an investor we want to raise five hundred thousand, he said, "I want to invest, but just so you know, if you think you need five hundred thousand, you should really raise seven hundred fifty. And then we raised. We asked another investor. He's like, "I want to invest, but just a tip: if you want, if you if you think you need seven hundred fifty, you should really raise one million. <laughs> and so um, the message here is: you raise as much as you can at any given time. Um, usually. Usually, you want you need more than you can get, and so you need to find how you can be frugal 
and, and make a lot of progress with the money. The most important thing is progress. Like you need to show that you, you took the money, you invested in something, you built something, and now you produce growth. And if you can then tell a story that if you had more money, you'd grow more, it, it's going to be easier to attract more money down the road. Does that and, make sense? Yeah, and I'd say as well, right, the likes of yourself, Nicholas, so you've done this before, so you, you've proven that you can make a company work, right? So does that not make it easier for you to get investors for your next idea or your next big company? Um, yeah, so that's exactly what happened. We First time... We, we built a company. It took us six weeks. We still got lucky. Like We raised money very quickly, but we got it six weeks. And which so, company is this? Is this the... The first one was Carlipso, the one right out yeah. of business school. Yeah. Um, we raised 1.2 million. Now yeah. that we've started a company, raised money, sold the company, and doing it again, fundraising took much, much, much shorter. So we're about to close a round. Um, it's more than 1.2 million, so more than we raised last time in a quicker amount of time, a shorter amount of time. Because you're right, like having done it before is, helps a lot and creates a lot of confidence in investors that we're at least not repeating the same mistakes again. Yeah. And what about um, the pressure of building a company with someone else's money? Because you you always have to show that you're making progress, that this is the right thing to invest in. I mean, there's a lot of pressure behind that. Yeah. Or is there? No, there is. Well, the good news is, well, there's there's two types of investor. There's the institution investor. That person's job is to deploy capital. Like that yeah. person is the person that I told about earlier who makes 10 investments and only expects one to work. Yeah. So <clears throat> he knows what he's doing. But it becomes tricky when you raise from friends and family because friends and family – will uh, we'll get very excited if, if, if you tell them about something you want to build. They don't ask the right questions sometimes. Oftentimes, they just invest because they, they think so highly of you. And uh, the risk there is that these people don't might not know exactly what they're getting into. Yeah. They're, they may just be exci- excited by, by the excitement of being, of being part of your journey. And so the conversations we're having there are always, always very intellectually honest, very straightforward, where I tell my friends, assume you don't see this money again. Assume we lose all of it. Yeah. And I'm asking or telling them that so they put themselves into the mental state of, okay, what happens if I lose all of it? And if that causes a problem, then I want them to either not invest or much less. And so yeah. usually when friends or family invest, I talk them to, down, they want to invest a little more and I tell them I'll, I'll take like a third of what you invest because I also don't want the extra pressure of, of, of building the business on the one side and then having, yeah. having my friends lose money. And so we had a little bit of money from friends and family in our first round and, and uh, I think everybody knew exactly what they're getting into until we're trying to do that again this time. And would you recommend somebody who's listening to this, they want to, they want. They are. They have an idea. They're they're starting up a company. They would. They like to look for venture capital. Um, would you recommend, you know, to stay away from friends and family? That it's it's probably easier if it's somebody who's 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 used to giving capital to companies yeah. and um, is not so perhaps emotionally attached. To the yeah, outcome. Well, that's a good question. Like of that. course, they're not going to invest unless there's a good outcome, but or they think there's a good outcome, but you know they're not so emotionally involved. Yeah. So my th- here's what happened to us. That that was our rule when we started our first company because we felt like the risk we're taking was so high, um, yeah. and we thought it was crazy. And so some friends asked, and we told them, "No, this is crazy. You shouldn't do this." And yeah. I'm not sure whether me telling them they shouldn't do that motivated them even more or whether they knew what they were doing. But uh, they really begged us like, no, please, please, please let me be part of this. And I know if I lose everything, it's not a problem. I just really want to be part of it and and get the updates and, and help you. And so in the beginning, we told them we don't want their money, but then we ended up taking their money because they really wanted to. And luckily that didn't lead to any problems. Everybody, everybody knew exactly the risk they were taking. And uh, so we, we didn't have to bother too much. But we, it was important to us to have these conversations. Yeah. 
Nicholas, this has been an amazing conversation. For anyone listening to this, they're looking to raise venture capital for their startup. What's that one thing you want to say to them? For, for every startup founder, the, the most important thing is to get started. Like the, the best way to get started is to just start something. I have an idea, put it in front of customers and get feedback. Because mm. if, if, you, if you think too much, you'll overthink it. You'll talk yourself out of starting the company. So you, you really need to get started. And then once you talk to customers, customers will tell you, here's where you're wrong. But this is, if you build this for me, I would buy it. So this is how you learn and start developing a more conviction around what to build. And, and the, the more confidence you have that this can work. And it's all about confidence. Fundraising is all about confidence. You need to pitch something that you really truly believe in. Most people will think you're crazy, but a few will think, oh, it's just, you're so confident in what you're building, it's worth supporting you. So yeah, in a nutshell, it's really important to just get started and then everything else will take care of itself. And move to America, my joke. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, I, you know, I, you know, I, I definitely what you said earlier, where you say, oh, you know, this went bust. They'll say, great, go do it again. Whereas over here, they're like, yeah, well, I knew that would happen. You know? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, I have to say, um, definitely in different countries or different mindsets. I love what you shared. Yes. Just start, get going, talk to customers, have the, you know, that builds confidence, gets you out there raising the funds and truly believe in it because you know, when you bring the passion across, people are going to believe in it with you. Um, thank you. This has been brilliant. Um, how do, how does somebody get in touch with you if they're interested in investing or they want to find out more about startups? Yeah, I think there's two ways. You can either go to the website of our new company, withclutch.com, withclutch.com, or find me on LinkedIn. I love connecting with more and more people, founders, like-minded people, investors on LinkedIn. Just look for Nicholas Hendrickson and you'll find me. And, and maybe, Lorna, you can put, put those links in the show notes so it's easier I for will, you of course. to find me. Absolutely. And uh, thank you for being here. This has been amazing. Thank you. Thank you for joining us on the Financial Freedom Podcast to creating wealth, investing, and developing your money mindset. To get started today on your journey, head on over to www.lornapool.com and grab your free course, Five Steps to Breaking Free from Your Poverty Mindset and Accelerating Your Journey to Financial Freedom. See you there.